we have come to the point in our experience that we are having right now where this coronavirus thing has become a new norm to the sense that it's it's probably going to rearrange and reconfigure or modify a lot of people's lives. There are people that are not used to sitting down or giving themselves some rest. So I want to encourage you, maybe it's made you to sit a little bit, to spend some time with the, with the family and with your children. That's something good. We're not going to thank God for coronavirus, but out of the out of the storm has come forth some good stuff. So turn with me to the book of Job, chapter 14. So we're going to read 7, 8, and 9. But I'm going to stay on verse 7. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bible, that's fine. For those of you watching, if you don't have it, it's on the screen. Just follow along as we read. The Bible says, for there is hope for a tree. Let me say that again. For there is hope for a tree. Let me say that again. For there is hope for a tree if it's cut down. That it will do what? Sprout again. And that its tender shoots will not cease. Though its roots may grow old in the earth and its stump may die in the ground, yet at the scent of the water it will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. Amen. You know, when I was reading this verse, and I see a prophetic word God is giving the church, using the life of Job. Job represented his life like a tree that was cut down. We all know the story of Job. And I see the effect that we're having, the challenges that we are all facing at this very critical time. And let me tell you this. This virus, it's real. I am not saying this to intimidate you. Follow me carefully. This virus, it's real. I'm not, we're not in any way undermining its reality. It's real. But the problem that we have is that we magnify it, we dress it so well, nicely, and we exalt the virus way beyond the solution that God has given us. We have so made this virus look like Goliath in our lives. We have magnified the virus to look like the, 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 uh, the giants in the land of Canaan. The land that was flowing with milk and honey. We have so magnified it. And so we are approaching this giant like an intimidating thing. And so, of course, when you approach such a giant, you feel intimidated. And that's where we are headed. The government has told us to do a lot of things, of course. Keep some social distancing. That is great. Uh, wash your hands and use your hand sanitizers. Wonderful. That's good. And stay at home for those of, for some states that are on lockdown. That is wonderful. But let me tell you this. You can still do all of this and still contact the virus. But I bring you good news. If you are a child of God listening to me, you must not be intimidated. Amen. Are you listening to me? You must not be intimidated because that's what the devil wants us to do. When I remember how David fought Goliath, why the people of Israel were afraid of the size of Goliath, David said, to the people, he says, this big man is just a, an uncircumcised beast that is only good as food for the birds. And so it makes me understand that the way you see your problem tells me how the problem will be to you. The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came to Jeremiah and he said to him and asked him, what do you see, son? And Jeremiah said in, in chapter 1, verse 11, he says, I see a branch of an almond tree. And he got an answer for that. The Bible says, God says, you have seen well. And because you have seen well, I will hasten my word to perform it. But what you see will tell how the problem becomes to you. 
You see it big, it will work for you big. If you see it small, it will work for you small. And that's why the Bible said, let it be unto you according to your faith. And so we have spent time magnifying coronavirus, a simple, tiny virus. We can't even see it, but we've made it look like Goliath. Let me tell you, I want to say this, and that's the purpose of this message. I tell you, do not let this demon intimidate you. The purpose is to intimidate you and want you to know where you stand. Remember again, I am not undermining its effect. The virus is real. It's real. Its potency is real. But for you, God has given you a place. God has given us a place. We are the sons and the daughters of God. And these signs shall follow them that believe. For in my name... They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly, deadly, deadly thing, anything deadly, let me say that again. If they drink anything deadly, whether you're drinking it from your nose or from your mouth, if it goes into the body, when you take anything deadly, what will happen? It will by no means hurt you. And it continues... They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. If you are a child of God, I want to encourage you, do not be intimidated. The virus can come to you. Every day we walk around, even in our, in our own homes. How many times have we even picked it up? But God says you will pick up every, any deadly thing and it will not harm you. Amen. If you know that, then you should relax. Give, just give up the stress. Do what you should do and what you can do. And having done all, do what? Stand. That's all you can do. Do not be threatened by anything. Do not harass yourself or the people around you. Just relax for God is on your side. You said for this sign shall follow them. Because the sun shall follow them, you can drink any deadly poison, nothing shall harm you. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes. If you're listening to the sound of my voice and you have someone sick in your house or someone that has already been diagnosed of this sickness, take this word to him. Let them connect to this message. I bring you a prophetic word of the Lord. I said you can drink any deadly thing. The virus may be in you, but it will not destroy you. It will not harm you. You will come out of it, and surely you will come out of it. And the Bible says it will not hurt you. All things have been placed under the foot of Christ. He created all things. Please follow me. He created all things, including coronavirus. Are you still with me? All things. Is coronavirus a thing? Yes, he created it. And so I was saying something that all things have been put under his feet, under the feet of Christ. Because everything, including the virus, is under his feet, the Bible says, and he has now, God has now given him a name. That is above every other name. And so even this virus will bow. The Bible says every knee, including the knee of this virus, will bow unto the name of Jesus Christ. Are you still with me? If God has met everything and declared that every knee shall bow unto the name of Jesus and now he gave us this name and said, go in this name of mine. And in Proverbs 18, it says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and they are saved. And so God has given us a name, the name above every other name. And I know that coronavirus must bow unto this name. I don't care how big, I don't care how big people magnify it. It must bow to the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe it, say amen. 
When you read 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it's not giving us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of sound mind. God has not given us the spirit of fear. So why should we fear? I want, listen, I want to, I, I'm telling you, do not let this overtake you. Do the things you should do. Like, let me say that again. I am not saying coronavirus is not there. You are not just going to go there and grab coronavirus and rub it on your face. Neither are you just going to grab coronavirus and sniff it. We are going to do what the Lord already told us to do. Wash your hands. Stay six feet the distance or more. I stay at home. Do all of that. Just follow the state instructions. Follow the guidelines. Obey it. We can be stubborn at this time because, the Lord, because of who we are. God has given us the authority and has commanded us to respect authorities. So I want to encourage you, don't let coronavirus destabilize your faith. In Job chapter 14, verse 7, let's look at the first line again. For there is hope for a tree. When you look at the life of a tree, you will discover one thing that there are two very important parts, the root of the plant and the shoot of the plant. The root of the plant is the source of life of the plant because the plant derives its livelihood from the root. What that tells me when you look up for the word root in Hebrew, it's called Riza, R-H-I-Z-A, R-H-I-Z-A. What that means, it simply means two things, the source or the foundation. If the root is the source or the foundation, that means that the strength of the root of the plant comes from the root. Christ is our foundation. And the Bible says that the faith we have, the justification by the faith of Christ, is the foundation of the saints. The Bible tells me that if the foundation is destroyed in Psalm, 9, in Psalm 11 verse 3, where will the righteous be? If the faith is destroyed, where will the righteous be? I want to make sure you're following me. Because the, the root, the foundation, which is the faith in Christ, for they that love the Lord, is their root. If that is destroyed, where will you stand? Cut off the root. The entire life of the plant is gone. And that's what Jesus said. The next morning after Jesus cursed the root, that uh, caused the plant, the fig tree. The next morning, Peter saw the plant and he said to it, This, the tree that Jesus cursed, has withered from the root. As long as the tree has its root deep down on the ground, it will not die. Because every part of that tree is alive. And the chances are that branches will have opportunities from every corner of that tree to sprout up. And so anyone who is in Christ, it does not matter what may have befallen that person. Could you, maybe you have been affected by this virus. Maybe you have been torn apart so you are devastated in any form. Then your tree may have been cut off. But let me bring the good news to you again today. I say you will sprout again. I say you will sprout again. Every part of you is still very lively. As long as your root remains in Christ, you will sprout again. Now let me put it this way. Strong trees with deep roots cannot be shaken. It does not matter the storm that hits them. It does not matter the, the challenges that they face through. But when a tree does not have root, according to what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 13, when you read verse 21 in Matthew 13, Jesus was given a parable of the sower. And he said, 
and, and it says in Matthew 13, 21, yet he has no root in himself. Or it was like the word of God that fell on the rock. It grew, but it has no root. And when the storm comes, it just washes it away. Someone was telling me that somewhere in, in Italy, a, a, a woman committed suicide because she didn't want to be affecting people with this sickness and something like that. I think I heard it somewhere. That should not be the case. And that's why we preach what we preach. If you're going through a depressed moment and you feel like isolating yourself, you feel like getting yourself so much into a painful moment, this is not the time. You will not die, but live to declare the praise of God. Are you with me here? God has given us every opportunity to live in strength. When you look at the life of Job, a prolific, promising young man, growing with riches, fearing God, living happily with his children. The Bible says every time he prays with his family, or he, he prays for the family, blesses them, sanctifies them. This is a man that a lot of people lean on. And suddenly, <clears throat> a tree was cut. Job's life was cut short. Not to kill him, but to get him change his mindset. His faith was challenged. His life was affected. And then you can see the switch from where he was as a promising young man to now a very painful, sickly, lost all beggar. He began to analyze God from his experience and from his own Job's point of view. So his understanding of God was based out of his experience. And he began to listen to his friend. When you read chapter 38, 39, 40, and 41, God sat him down and began to teach him. Listen, I pray someday that God will sit us down and teach us. Because we have been listening to too many people and to too many things. And right now, even the situation we are in, coronavirus is now teaching us. It is not teaching us anything good. We are learning from our experience and from our surroundings. Rather than learning from God. God called Job and sat him down and said, listen. Where were you when I framed this earth? I molded it and put it into the midst of nothing and caused it to hover around this earth. Where were you? When I breathed into life and met man, where were you? When I sought into the midst of the circuit of the stars and I named the stars one by one and I can call all of the stars, where were you when I did all of that? And even in chapter 41, he said, even Leviathan, the one that I kicked out from my throne, where were you when I put a hook in his nose and flung him right into the earth? Were you there? That was after listening to God. In chapter 42, his mindset changed. I want to make sure you understand because the word of God is what brings a change. When God speaks to you directly and you know that God is speaking, that's when your life changes. So you will no more be controlled by the circumstances around. Look at what Job said. I have heard of you. Look at. But now my eyes have seen you. This was what triggered the change in Job's life. When, you be, when he began to see God differently, he saw God different. After God talked to him. Related with him. He saw differently. And I bring this same good news today. Do not let this demon intimidate your life. Do not let this stupid virus intimidate you. Get on your feet and begin to live your life normal. You can still stay home, but live normal. Don't fear. 
Do not be dismayed. All it's trying to do is to change your mindset. And when you understand this, you will overcome. Look at what he says again. But now, but now, I see you. Can you think of this? Just take a moment and think of this. All along I believe this. I've heard of this. I've heard of this. Our prayer is, Lord, make me see you directly. Make me know you in a unique way so that my understanding will change. This was verse 5 of chapter 42. What he did, what he understood in verse 5, led him to what happened in verse 10. What happened in verse 10, the Bible said he went out to pray for his friends because of verse 10, because of verse 5. God spoke to him, he understood, and now he went to verse 10 and began to pray for all his friends, Elihu, Aliphaz, and all of them. After praying for his friends, the Bible says in verse 10, 12, God began to multiply and change his life. The Bible says God now gave him double portion in verse 12. And in verse 16, God gave him long life. All because he understood well from verse 5. What I have come to discover is that whenever anyone experiences any kind of challenge you're always stronger than before you have had experience going through some kind of a situation attack or challenge when you come out of it from your mind to your body you are always stronger amen, amen. the bible says this is a tree that was cut the tree was cut but out of this tree shoots begin to come out. And this tree, this shoots that began to come out, the Bible says, will not fail. Because the Bible tells me in Haggai that the, that, that the glory of the latter rain will always surpass the glory of the former. Are you still with me? Your letter will be better than the before. However it is, you are the great reaper of, oh my God, the fruit of joy that will come after the storm. David says something in Psalm 1. Look at what he says. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those that dreams. Zion that was in captivity for 70 years. And the Lord delivered them. They never believed they could come out of it. But the Bible says that when they were delivered, oh, they were them that dream it. The Bible says their mouth was filled with laughter and their tongue was filled with songs. That's the way it's going to be for us in the name of Jesus. In the next few, maybe weeks that will come, we will come out of it and we will be filled with joy and laughter. We will celebrate victory in the name of Jesus. I'm going to end with this. Romans chapter, chapter, eight, chapter 8. Book of Romans chapter 8. Paul was speaking to the church. A troubled Roman ch uh, church. And he said to them in verse 31. What then shall we say? If God be for us, who can be against us? God is for you, he is with you, and he is in you. And if you know that, you should not worry. His grace is so ever abounding. Who can ever be against us? I call upon you to seek him, receive him, accept him. Make him your Lord. If you have not received him, this is a great opportunity. Don't let this evil intimidate you. When you step into the household of God, you will be delivered.
in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your confession should be positive. When you read Numbers chapter 13, you will see the confession of two out of the 12 tribes that went to spy the land, Joshua and Caleb. The story that we all know. The Bible says that Joshua and Caleb came back from the same spying and they spoke out of what they saw. And so though they saw giants, though they saw big men, people with six fingers, people that were 10 feet tall, people that were had 10 to, uh, 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 12 toes, and yet what he saw spiritually was different. I want you to change your mindset. See right, think right, and speak right. And whatever you seek and prophesy right, so shall it be for you. I want to pray. There are some of us that are listening from wherever you're connected with me. If you're listening to the sound of my voice, I don't know what has been taken out of you. Somehow, maybe you have been cut down. That talent, that gift, that skill seems to have been cut out of you. And for years, you seem worried and scared that it might not come alive again. Or maybe by virtue of what we're experiencing right now. Maybe you've lost a, lot, a loved one. Somehow someone has died in your family because of this challenge, this attack. Or maybe you're caregiving someone who is at home, sick, and you're all scared and worried if the person is going to survive. Or maybe someone who is listening to the sound of my voice and is directly affected by this incident that's going on, your job is threatened, and it seems like you've lost it all, and you, you're feeling like Job with a tree that is cut off. I want to bring this assurance to you. Your root is still intact. Your stump will sprout again. And I bring this prayer. If you're listening again to the sound of my voice and you have not given your life to Christ, your hope is not lost. Thank God for this medium. Wherever you may have connected, please don't turn it off because I know that your stump will sprout again. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's bow our head and pray. First of all, those of you that have not found Christ, the blessings and the covering and the assurance that we have in his grace cannot be your portion if you are out of the covering. The Bible says that they that dwell in the secret place of the Most High, for they shall abide under the shadow. If you are not in that secret place, if you are not dwelling in that secret place, let me tell you, you are not covered. You are not covered. This is an opportunity for you. God is still waiting for you. Standing at the door and he's knocking and he's inviting you. All ye that labor and heavy laden, come. That I may give you rest. You may be wondering, I was in, I was in Christ somehow before. And because of some things that happened in my life, I just quit because I just couldn't take it anymore. Or maybe you got yourself entangled in so many other things, and now you're telling yourself you've gone deep down into the hole that you don't, you don't feel that you may be forgiven again. Oh no, he will. He has already forgiven you when you come to him. I want you to join me in this prayer in the air Stretch forth thy hands, if you, if you will, and let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the love that you have for me. You have loved me long before, even in the midst of my sins and my iniquity. You love me even for making me to come right at this point that this message is coming forth. That is a sign of your love that I may hear it. And so, Lord, I come before you today with my heart. Forgive me of all of my sins. 
cleanse me from all of my unrighteousness, Lord. From this moment, I receive you. You are my Lord. You are my Father. You are my Savior, Lord Jesus. I believe that you died. I believe that you were buried. I believe that you resurrected. And I believe that you are seated in heaven. And I believe that you are in me. And I believe that you have received me into yourself. Strengthen me with thy Holy Spirit. Baptize me from this moment. I am yours and you are mine. For in Jesus Christ I pray. Amen. Amen.